you by Bush Beer, the beer with a taste as smooth as its name. By Manufacturers Hanover Trust, we realize your potential. By Nissan, who invites you to test drive the totally new 1987 Nissan Stanza at your Nissan dealer now. By Burger King, where you'll find chicken tenders made with real chicken. By Ford, your local New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut Ford dealers. And by AT&T, the right choice. For the Mets tonight, right-hander Dwight Gooden, who's 13 and 4 with an ERA of 3.02, and on the mound for the Padres, right-hander Ed Whitson, 1 and 6 with an ERA of 5.32. And hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Kiner, along with Dan McGarver and Steve Zabriskie, all set for the final game of this road trip and also the final game of the San Diego Padres this year in San Diego. The Mets have won six of the eight games they have played with the Padres. And they lead in the Eastern Division but by 20 games over the Philadelphia Phillies going into the action today. And the Mets on this road trip have uh, since to tie their best record ever on a road trip to the West Coast. They have come into this game with a record of 7-1 and one on the road. Their best ever was 7-2, and two, so the Mets could break that record. And the Mets have done all this without... Gary Carter. Yeah, that's the most recent test, as a matter of fact. The Mets are 8-2 and two with Gary Carter out of the lineup. He went down a couple of weeks ago. He should be back around September 1st, but again, it gives you an idea of what kind of depth this ball club has. At every position, with the exception of catcher, and that was the problem position, yet Ed Hearn and John Gibbons have uh, come on to do a fine job with the pitching staff and with the bat. And the San Diego Padres are floundering. They're in last place, sixth place to be a uh, Factual on it, and they are 12 and a half games back of Houston. Houston playing their ball game today. We'll check out that a little bit later on. So it's a beautiful night for baseball. Couldn't have it any better here in San Diego, the final game of the road trip. But right now, this message from Bush Beer. Ed Whitson on the mound for the San Diego Padres. He has a record of one and six and has returned to the National League, making his first appearance against the Mets this year. He has worked a total of 47 and one-third innings, giving up 48 hits, one of them a home run, walking 21, striking out 25, and he has a lifetime record against the Mets of four wins and one loss. And the lineup for the Mets, Lynn Dykstra leading off and playing center field. Second baseman Wally Backman batting second. Keith Hernandez at first base hitting third. Daryl Strawberry playing right field and batting fourth. Hitting fifth, Danny Heath, the left fielder. Third baseman Ray Knight with his eighth four-hit game in his career last night. As the Mets pounded out 21 hits, their high for the season. John Gibbons, the catcher, batting seventh. Rafael Santana with his first home run of the year in last night's game, hitting eighth. And Dwight Gooden on the mound, batting ninth. And the defense for the Padres, Garvey at first, Flannery at second, Templeton at short, Nettles at third. McReynolds in left field, John Crook in center field, and Tony Gwynn in right. Catcher Terry Kennedy and Ed Woodson, the pitcher. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets and WRTV and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience, any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets, and WRTV is prohibit prohibited. Lenny Dykstra, the leadoff for the Mets. Lenny Dykstra now at 300, hitting 297 for the year. He's had seven home runs and has driven in 40. Lenny has had just two hits in his last 40 at-bats. He is 0 for 3 in this series, although hitting 400 against the Padres this year. So Dykstra trying to break out of a slump that has cost him some 35 or so points since he was up in the 330s, and the first pitch is ball one. Dykstra, Dykstra's on-base average is 373. And he looks at an off-speed pitch, and they count two balls, no strikes. 
Mets are leading the National League in hitting as a team at 264. They lead in home runs with 121. And they lead in earned run average at 3.14. And the count, two balls and one strike. Whitson back with a fastball. It just does miss, and that puts the count at three and one. Whitson with the Yankees this year as he works to Len Dykstra. Ended his career there with a record of five and two for the 86 season. And the fastball is inside for ball four. So the Mets have their first base runner as Dykstra walks. And that'll bring up Wally Backman. Second baseman, number six. Wally hitting Wally 330 with no home runs and 24 RBI. In his last 18 ball games, he has hit 362. And his on-base average, 379. So the table setters Dykstra and Backman well over 370 as their on-base percentage sets up the chance for the Mets power hitters to drive in runs. Mets lead in runs scored with 621 in the National League, and they lead in hits with 1,151. And Dykstra draws some attention at first base. Dykstra with 25 stolen bases in 32 attempts. And the first pitch to Backman, a fastball, strike one. Paul Runge, the home plate umpire, Dave Pallone, the umpire at first base, Jim Quick, the umpire at second, and Bob Engel, the umpire at third. Mets on the road with a record of 45 and 22 this year. 23 games over 500. A toss to first and Dykstra back easily. The Mets record on the road, as a matter of fact, only three shy of their all-time high. They won 20 or 48 ball games back in 1969 on the road. The major league record, 55 wins on the road by the 71 Oakland A's. And again, Dykstra draws attention at first. So they're well within reach of those records. Usually the old saying went, play 500 on the road and win it at home. But the Mets are winning it on the road. Now the pitch to Backman, line to center field. It will be taken on the bounce in center field. Dykstra goes to second just ahead of the throw as he had to hold up as John Crook in center field almost got to that ball. Make that McReynolds in center field. So McReynolds on the short hop. Lynn Dykstra had to hold up to make sure that McReynolds didn't catch the ball. Mets threatening early once again, and we've seen a similar situation all year long with Dykstra and Backman always on, on base. No one out, and Keith Hernandez the batter. Keith hitting 301 for the year with 11 home runs and 64 RBIs. Keith is eighth in the National League in hitting with his 301 average. He's second in runs scored with 79. And his on base average 403, second in the National League. And the first pitch, ball one. Keith leads the National League and walks with 76. Keith in his series, two for seven. And Ed Woodson tries again and misses with a fastball. The count, two balls, no strikes. Ralph, you mentioned the Mets' road record, 23 games over 500, 45 and 22. Their road record is better than any other major league team's home record. <laughs> and four games better than their own home record. 39 and 20 at home. And the Mets coming off a long time on the road. This has been a very tedious stretch for the New York Mets. And now they'll play most of the games in September at Shea Stadium. Two and one to count as Woodson tries to struggle through. Two men on, no one out here in the top of the first and his slider inside. And the count three and one. Say, as far as Ed Whitson's career was concerned, as you look at Strawberry on deck, the worst thing that could have happened to him was to go to New York. He plain and simply could not handle the pressure of the big city. Matter of fact, earlier this year, 
Runners go with a pitch, but the pitch is fouled back out of play. Earlier this year, Lou Pinella and George Steinbrenner, Clyde King, decided to pitch Ed Whitson only on the road. An unprecedented situation, not only for the Yankees, but any team in baseball. Yankees signed him in 1984 as a free agent after a 14 and 8 year here with San Diego. And he got some big bucks. Whitson, of course, did have some problems with the Yankee manager, Billy Martin. They got into a big rhubarb, and Martin came out of it with a broken arm. Again, the runners go, and again, the ball is fouled away. So the count at three balls and two strikes, and Davey Johnson playing the type of baseball that you'd have to say is spectacular. Forcing the ball game. He puts the pressure on the other team. Certainly has the players to do that. Hernandez, a good contact hitter with a good eye. Runners go for the third time. This time it's ball four. So the base is loaded as Keith picks up his 77th walk. And with no one out, the batter will be Daryl Strawberry. Well, that summarizes the Padres season right there. The picture tells it, doesn't it? Sure does. The scratching of the head with the cap on. <laughs> Strawberry hitting 264 with 18 home runs, 69 RBIs. Darrell one for eight so far in this series. Steve Boris, the manager of the Padres, took over for Dick Williams. And the first pitch lined to right field, a base hit. Dykstra scores, Backman scores, Hernandez goes to third, and the Mets lead by a score of two to nothing as Daryl Strawberry drives in his 70th and 71st runs. Oh, here comes Galen Cisco out the Padres using five pitchers in last night's game. They do not want to go to the bullpen too early. But a terrible start for Eddie Lee Whitson, who is one and six for the Padres, having all sorts of problems. Still no one out, and the batter for the Mets will be Danny Heap. As Galen Sisko, a former Met, talks it over with Ed Whitson. Whitson started his career for the Pittsburgh Pirates, was eight and nine there, then went to San Francisco, was 22 and 30 for the Giants, then went to Cleveland, was four and two with Cleveland, then went to San Diego, was 19 and 15 in San Diego. His one outstanding year was a 14 and eight year for the Padres, and then he signed with the Yankees. For the Yankees in 85, he was 10 and eight, and this year, five and two. He was traded to San Diego for Tim Stoddard. So now Danny Heap the batter. Danny hitting 286 with five home runs, 25 RBIs. The runner goes, and Strawberry has a stolen base. Stolen base number 26 for Daryl Strawberry, and the pressure keeps mounting. We need to talk about their road record again. I don't think the Mets are on the road. I think a ballpark is their home this year, and that's the way they're playing. Doing, it, doing anything they want to do virtually. Mets 95th stolen base in 136 attempts. It puts two runners now in scoring position. And the pitch is taken for a call strike two. And he is at 301 as a starting player. He has made 41 game starts for the Mets with five home runs and 22 RBIs. Hernandez the runner at third. Strawberry at second. No one out. The Mets lead 2-0 and strike three. So Whitson comes back to strike out Heap on three pitches. His first out of the ball game. And it will bring up the red-hot Ray Knight. Danny thought this ball was inside, but you see the little tail on the end. It was a very close pitch. Whitson gets a much-needed strikeout. Ray Knight, the batter, as Tim pointed out, Ray with his eighth four-hit game in last night's ball game, his second this year. And that has raised his batting average to 303. Did you pitch to him here? Was Gibbons First on base deck? open with John Gibbons on deck? No way. You got to set up a chance to get out of this, and a double play would do it. But they are pitching to Ray Knight, who has been hot, and there's a swing and a miss. Good slider. 
Ray in this series with a pinch hit that drove in a run. And he is five for six against the Padres in this series. Four hits last night for the eighth time in his career and the second time this year. John Gibbons on deck. Gibbons, of course, a newcomer to Major League Ball. And if they would walk night here, it sets up a chance for a double play. Topper out on the first base side. And Wilson, he has no play. On the play, Hernandez scores. And the Mets lead three to nothing on the air by Woodson. Ray Knight probably will be credited with an RBI here, as you can't anticipate a play at the plate being an out. But on the other hand, it is an error on Ed Whitson. He got the desired result, the little tapper to the right side, but he really has no play. But still in all, I think you ought to walk Ray Knight because then you can play your double, your infield and double play depth and get out of the inning, as you said. So now runners at first and third, and John Gibbons a batter. And he looks at a breaking ball, a slider for ball one. Gibbons hitting at 286. He's had two hits and seven at bats since coming up from Tidewater. Padres at double play depth, and the fastball high, one ball, one strike. In games where the Mets have scored first, they have a record of 58 and 16 as. The manager of the Padres ponders the situation. Steve Burroughs, who took over this year. And there are rumors that he will not be back for a second try. There's a high fly ball out into right field. Cody Gwynn is in right. Tagged up at first is Knight. The throw home. And it is in time. And Strawberry is out. Fine throw by Tony Gwynn to end the inning on the double play. Look at the position he gets himself in to throw the ball. Strawberry actually slides too soon, but a nice play by Terry Kennedy, but credit Tony Gwynn. Look at the position at this fine young ball player gets in to throw the ball. One of the quality players in the major leagues, Tony Gwynn. So in the inning, the Mets get three runs on two hits. There was one error and one man left in the score at the end of one half inning. The Mets three, the Padres coming up. Now, here's a word from Getty. Dwight Gooden stakes to a 3-0 lead as he takes the mound. Looking for his 14th victory of the year. He's lost four. He's 1-0 against the Padres. Dwight has worked 188 innings. He has given up 50, 153 hits, 13 of them home runs. He has walked 60 while striking out 142. His lifetime record, 4-2 against the Padres. Tim Flannery leading off, playing second. Right fielder Tony Gwynn hitting second. John Crook, the center fielder, batting third. Kevin McReynolds, the left fielder, hitting fourth. Steve Garvey at first, batting fifth. Greg Nettles at third base, hitting sixth. Terry Kennedy, the catcher, batting seventh. Gary Temple in the switch, hitting shortstop, hitting eighth. And Ed Whitson on the mound, batting ninth. And the defense, as you take a look at Bob Huker on the bench. Great seats, huh, guys? <laughs> Hernandez at first, Backman at second, Santana at short, Knight at third. In the outfield, Heath in left field, Dykstra in center, Strawberry in right, and the catcher, John Gibbons. And the first pitch by Dwight Gooden, a call strike. And the next pitch on the ground to the second baseman, Backman, and the throw to first base for the out. So Tim Flannery leading off, hitting 289, grounds out. Flannery with three home runs, 24 RBIs. That'll bring up the league-leading hitter in the National League, Tony Gwynn, hitting at 340 for the year. He has 13 home runs, one against Gooden, and he has driven in 52. Gwynn with a four-hit game yesterday, and he takes the first pitch for ball one. Gwynn with his eighth four-hit game in his major league career. Against Gooden, though, he has not fared well as he's hitting 158, 3 for 19. And there's a fastball for a strike. It's 1 and 1. Against the Mets pitchers, he's hitting 452 with two home runs, one against Gooden. And he has 14 hits this year. 14 for 31 against the Mets pitchers. And the fastball in a good spot and fouled away, 1 and 2. When a basketball player at San Diego State, which is not more than a couple miles from this ballpark. 
has a younger brother who was on the Olympic baseball team last year and finished the season at San Antonio in double A ball this year. Chris Gwynn. Ground ball to the shortstop, Santana. And Gwynn is out by a stride. Santana with that time throw likes to get you by a half stretch. Step. Very frustrating for batters. Well, here it is. The Padres down 3-0, uh, buried in last place. And we've already seen, and here it is, the bottom of the first. Tony Gwynn throw out a runner at, at home plate, a fast runner at that. And he ran very hard to first base. And all big leaguers don't do that. That guy is a quality ball player and gives management their money's worth. And now the batter will be John Crook and his record at 319 for the year with three home runs, 23 RBIs. And the first pitch ball one. Crook hitting 167 against the Mets, one for six. And the ground ball foul, so the count one ball and one strike. This is a fine looking hitter right here. He's a great guy, too. He's from Kaiser, West Virginia. Delightful young man. Right out of the hills of West Virginia. Reminds you a little of Len Dykstra with all those antics with the bats and the hands and. And the breaking ball, first one by Gooden, one ball, two strikes. <laughs> he does act like that, doesn't he? At Las Vegas in 1985, he hit 351. See, Three he's touchdowns. having fun. Look at him. The guy's having fun. Gotta love it. Yeah. Even though it's Gooden on the mound, he's getting his kicks in. There's a fastball fouled off. The count stays at one and two. Isn't that great? <laughs> now he's saying a few words to John Gibbon. Little old one on one. Good old country hardball right here. Kaiser, West Virginia hardball. Was born in Charleston, West Virginia. Signed as a third round selection in the second phase of the June draft. He's hit over 304 of his five years in the major <laughs> league. Boy, he's a pup. Oh, I love of, this. He's a pup out of Dykstra. There's no doubt about it. You had Lenny and John Crook on the same club, just wind them up and let them go all over the place. <laughs> Animation. And the curve this time is in the dirt. The Mets appeal to third base umpire Bob Bingo. He said no swing. Two and two the count. Padres at the All-Star break were only three games out of first place. Now they're 12 and a half, and since the All-Star game, they won 14 and lost 25. And Gooden gets his first strikeout on the high fastball. So a one, two, three inning for Dwight Gooden. And the score at the end of one, the Mets three and the Padres nothing. Now here's a word from Diet Right Cola. Fans, what a treat. When the Mets bring it home this Friday night at 7.30, they host the Los Angeles Dodgers live from Shea. And the first pitch is Ed Woodson works to Rafael Santana, strike one. And also, don't miss the world premiere of the New York Mets just released music video before the game, right before the game on Friday night. Also be on the Diamond Vision board, too. One ball, one strike to Rafael Santana. Santana hitting 207 with one home run, 18 RBIs, and that ball ripped down the right field line. Gwyn over, plays it perfectly. Here's the throw to second. Second outfield assist for Tony Gwynn. The man works on his defense. He's out here almost every day taking extra hitting. I mean, two years ago, he was an average outfielder. And now he is one of the quality right fielders, not only in the National League, but in baseball. He got to the ball in a hurry and made a strong throw. Very aggressive right fielder, and a good one. So Tony Gwynn throws out Santana. Now the batter will be Dwight Gooden. Gooden with only five hits and 61 at-bats. And he looks at a breaking ball, a hard slider, and the count one ball and one strike. I guess our invitations to be in that video got lost in the mail, huh? <laughs> Yours and Steve's and mine. <laughs> Well, another chance to star. <laughs> Down the two. Just because the mail wasn't delivered. <laughs> One and two to Dwight Gooden. I don't think Bill Webb's in it, even. Bill says he is. Hmm. No yeah. wonder we're promoing it. <laughs> <laughs> Whitson reached for three runs in the first inning. 
all three of the runs earned. And now the fastball to Gooden fouled back into the stands. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Brooklyn, New York. United States Marine Corps. All right. Big Marine. Marine. Mm -hmm. A lot of Marines here in this ballpark. And right near here, a great Marine base. And a boot camp here, too. Camp Pendleton and the Marine boot camp. Throw to first base for the out and two men away. No relation to Terry Pendleton of the Cardinals, right? No. They're going a little That's better than Terry, I think. <laughs> I, I hope they are. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now Lenny Dykes with the batter. Lenny walked his first time up, scored a run. Average staying at 297. Seven home runs and 40 RBIs. Whitson's fastball fouled off. Mets leading 3 0. Two men out. We're in the top of the second inning. And the fastball, one and one. Now we get a chance to see the antics of Len Dykstra. Ran into his brother. Ryan Dykstra at the hotel is down here to see him. This ball fouled away, so they count one and two. And his mother was down here for the series. She's gone back, so she's not here tonight. Of course, his family coming from the California Angel Territory, where Dykstra used to sneak into the ballpark. Watch his idol, Rod Carew. Rod's fastball foul off. Rodney Klein Carew, who retired this year. Before he retired, he had the highest batting average of any active player. 331? Somewhere right around 330. And at 1-2. Struck him out. So, Whitson comes back to shut out the Mets here in the second. He gave up a hit, and no one left on base. And the score at the end of one and a half innings, the Mets three and the Padres nothing. Now, here's a word from Frito-Lay. to the bottom of the second inning and nobody covers sports like Channel 9 with double duty from Steve and Al Albert on News 9 Primetime along with the rest of the award-winning Channel 9 news team. Weeknights at 8 only on Channel 9 and only on Channel 9, Tim McCarver. All right, Ralph, thank you very much. A fastball inside to Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds batting 282. He's seventh in the National League and RBIs tied with Steve Garvey. Fly ball, right field. An easy play for Darrell Strawberry. Four in a row retired by Gooden. One away here in the second, and the batter, Steve Garvey. Gooden with one strikeout. Came into the ball game with 142. Sixth in the National League. Got it, sir. Garvey batting 260, 19 home runs, representing the most home runs he's hit. Since 1980, when he had 26 for the Dodgers. He's hit good and well, batting 381 against Dwight with eight hits and 21 at bat. Ground ball over the head of Gooden. Backman to Hernandez. Five in a row retired by Gooden. And the batter will be Greg Nettles. Mets take a charter, a red eye charter, back to New York. Stop in St. Louis to refuel. Landing in New York about 7 in the morning. I imagine Dan Musial will be out there to greet you in St. Louis. <laughs> be about, good. what, 5 in the morning? Give Lil and Stan a call, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> Dan has a piece of that Ozark Airlines. He's on the board of directors. Maybe that's why we're going through there. <laughs> he and Arthur Richmond, close friends. Very close. <laughs> Ground ball to Hernandez. Talk about an easy inning. Four pitches, and Gooden is out of the second. Pitchers love that. After two, Gooden and the Mets have a 3 0 lead, and we go to the third after this word from Nissan. Kelly Backman leads it off for New York here in the top of the third inning. The Mets on top, 3 0. Backman single the center field his first time up and scored a run. 
Mets trying to sweep the Padres and go 8-1 and one on this road trip. Their best ever to the West Coast. 0-1 to Backman. Back in 1972, they were 7-2, which had been their previous best record. So no matter what, the Mets will tie that. That's how, ball, how big the ball has looked to the Met hitters, especially the last three nights. One attempt, Whitson will take it right on the mound. One out. Well, when you're winning and having a lot of fun, the Mets had a little trick pulled on them. Actually, it was Lee Mazzilli. When he came to look at the starting lineup, his name was in the starting lineup. Vern Horscheid posting the lineup. And Lee said, what's that number five after my name? And he says, that means you're playing third base. He says, what? And he thought a minute, and he says, well, when you're 20 games up, I guess I can play third base. <laughs> That's magic number 17 over the Phillies and 16 for the Montreal Expos. The Expos have played three fewer games than the Phillies. Fastball to Hernandez. He walked and scored a run. First time up. Big blow in that first inning. A base is loaded, no out. Single by Daryl Strawberry. RBI's number 70 and 71. 0 and 2 to Hernandez. Waits, Keith just said. Waits. He's waited a lot in this series. He's had a total of four walks. Ball inside, one and one. One and two makes that. That is the universal word that hitters tell themselves when they're good hitters. When you're a bad hitter, it's usually let's get going. Move. Shut good up. hitters wait. Shut up and deal. <laughs> two and two to Hernandez. Changeup hit hard to right, but foul. So it's still two and two. Changeup to Keith Hernandez is not a good pitch. Not with two strikes. No way. Keith is an opposite field hitter with two strikes. He sits on the ball. He waits for the breaking ball. And when you're looking for the breaking ball with two strikes, changeup doesn't change that much. Boy, it's sharply to Templeton and right through the wicket. So Gary Templeton, the second error of the game for the Padres, who have committed the fewest errors of any team in the National League. Well, this ball is not hit to a difficult position. It is hit hard, and it goes off the heel of the shoe as Templeton commits the error. And Daryl Strawberry, the batter. Garvey holding Hernandez on at first base for some reason. Keith has two stolen bases on the year. Garvey went through an entire season without making an error at first base a couple of years ago. No other players ever done that in Major League history. Well hit to right field. There's that changeup again. Tremendously high home run for Daryl Strawberry, number... 19 on the year, and the Mets lead it 5 to nothing. Well, it's a landmark home run for Darrell Starberry. It's his 100th career home run, his 19th this year, and I want to tell you, it was up there a long time. It went about 40 rows deep into the bleachers in right field, but the height of the ball was the amazing part of this one. It is up there now, Stark County. It, uh, it's still up there. The hang time on that has got to be about seven or eight seconds. There it comes down finally. Danny Heap fouls one off. 
Well, Strawberry hit the speaker in the Astrodome. He hit it in the home run hitting contest at the All-Star Game in Houston. Only other player to hit a speaker in batting practice or otherwise, Mike Schmidt, back in 1974. And I'll guarantee you that ball might have been over the speaker that hangs down from the top of the dome. So the Mets lead it five to nothing. Oh, one and two to Danny Heap. He struck out his first time up. Darrell with four RBIs in this game, and the game-winning RBIs, he drove in the first two runs with a single to right. He's tied for third in the National League in game-winning RBIs with 11, tied with Kevin McReynolds of the Padres. Still two and two to Heap. The leader in game-winning RBIs on the DL, Gary Carter with 13. Glenn Davis of Houston with 12. Breaking ball outside to Heaps. Three and two to Danny. Strike three on virtually the same pitch that Whitson struck Heap out on the first time. Two out. And this is the third strikeout. Danny thought the first one was inside. This time he thinks it's low and inside. And Paul Runge, the home plate umpire, said no way. So the beleaguered heap goes back to the heap of bats in the dugout. Ray Knight, the batter, he had an RBI on an error committed by Ed Whitson with runners at second and third in the first inning. Ray hit a little cue shot between the pitcher and first base, and Whitson couldn't come up with it in time. 0-2 to Ray Knight. Ball hit well to right field, but playable as Tony Gwynn goes back. Two runs for the Mets in the third inning on only, on only one hit, one costly error, and none left. After two and a half, the thunder continues. It's five to nothing, New York. We'll be back after this word from Bartles and James. Return to Shea Stadium starting up Friday night in their next homestand, and it'll be the San Francisco Giants on Monday, September 1st at 1.35. A very special day, that's Labor Day, and it's Met Life Windbreaker Day. And all kids 14 and under will receive a specially designed New York Mets windbreaker courtesy of MetLife. Tickets are available at all Ticketron outlets at Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window or by calling 718-507-TIXX. You can get more information regarding the date. And the Giants will be the second series at Shea. Before the Giants, the Dodgers move into Shea the 29th, 30th, and 31st of August. Following the Dodgers, Roger Craig and the Giants, as Ralph said, begin that three-game series starting Monday afternoon on MetLife Kids Windbreaker Day. And the series continuing Tuesday and Wednesday night, September 2nd and 3rd. Tickets can be purchased at all Ticketron outlets, Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window, or you can call 718-507-TIXX for more information. A lot of Mets fans here on all three coastal cities. The left coast, as Steve Zabriskie refers to this lovely area called California. Terry Kennedy fouls it back. Gooden has retired six Padres in a row. Kennedy batting 258, 10 home runs, and the subject of trade rumors. Father Dan Murphy to the right of Arthur Richmond, who has his plans all made. That charter airplane back to New York. One and one to Kennedy. Two and one to Terry. That was the first curveball of the ball game. For Dwight Gooden. Kennedy one for 21 against the Mets this year. 
That's an old 48 average. Ground ball to second. He's going to be one for 22 after this throw by Backman. Four assists for Wally Backman. Seven in a row retired by Gooden, and Gary Templeton will be the batter. Tim, while we got a second, I want to pass on a happy birthday to Annabelle Geiger, who watched you play ball when she was in Philadelphia. And that's her 67th birthday. She saw you break in. She was a little kid when she was at that ballpark. <laughs> Four assists for Wally Backman. Eight in a row retired by Gooden. Is that Baker Bowl or Connie Mack Stadium? I think uh, she missed you at Baker Bowl because they tore that down. She wasn't born yet, but then over in Connie Mack, she caught your act over there. Baker Bowl would have good, been a good place for William Perry to play in, wouldn't it? <laughs> Ground ball up the middle, base hit. The first hit of the ball game and the first base runner for the Padres. Who gets it? Ed Whitson. Whitson getting his second hit since coming back into the National League. He had been one for 14, and he breaks up the perfect game of Dwight Good. There have been only 13 perfect games pitched in Major League history. The odds are astronomical. Last to do it, Mike Witt. Did it September 30th, 1984. Mike now 16 and 7. He did it on the last day of the season. Nobody even read about it. Barely mentioned. Angels did not win it, of course, that year. The last division they won was back in 82. Then lost to the Brewers in the American League Championship Series. Oh, and won the Flannery. Angels now leading Texas by four games. In their bid to get Gene Mock off the hook. Gene has never won a championship. Texas winning down at Ranger Stadium in Arlington, Texas tonight. Four to one over the Red Sox. Game in the seventh inning. Curve ball and a beauty. 0 oh and 2 to Flannery. 1964, Gene Mock was the manager of the Phillies, and the Phillies had it wrapped up. They thought. They lost eight of their last nine ball games. And the Cardinals won it. Fastball on the corner. Second strikeout for Gooden. No runs a hit. One left in the third. Five to nothing, New York. We go to the fourth after this word Ladies from the New York up. Racing Association. Channel 9 brings out the big gun. That's Magnum starring Tom Selleck as Hawaii's Number one export starting September 15th, weeknights at 6, only on Channel 9. And here's Steve. Thank Welcome, partner. Thank you, Timmy. And a pleasant good evening to you all. John Gibbons is leading off the fourth for New York with the Mets leading 5 to nothing. And Gibbons fouled off the first with an offering for strike one. And it's one and one. Gibbons fly down to right field. It turned out to be a double play that ended the first inning when Strawberry was thrown out at the plate attempting to score. Then a breaking ball missed. One and two. John making his third start behind the plate since being called up when Gary Carter went on the disabled list. And Gibbons has hit in each of his two previous starts. Right in there for strike three. Whitson picks up his third strikeout, and all three have been called. A little backup slider on that one. Let's take a look at the Nissan scoreboard. The Giants over the Montreal Expos at the final. Three to two in an afternoon game. Two to one, Philadelphia over L.A., also an afternoon game. Nine to five, Cincinnati, who's playing good ball. That game in the ninth inning at Pittsburgh. One to one, Atlanta and St. Louis. That game in the seventh. Santana takes a strike. And the last game in the National League, Houston and Nolan Ryan, six to nothing over the Cubs after six. Ground ball in the hole, Templeton back on the outfield grass, not in time. And Rafael Santana is two for two 
and has now had seven hits in his last 13 at bats. Guys, Rafi has really been swinging the bat well. Back on July 29th, he was batting 176, and he's hit almost 300 since then. Batting 281 since then, coming into this game, and now two for two. Good try by Templeton. So Santana at first with one out for Dwight Gooden, who squares to bunt but takes the ball outside. In that giant Montreal game, incidentally, Kelly Downs got his first major league victory, uh -huh. finally. Mm -hmm. Dwight gets the bunt down. Whitson will go to first, and the sacrifice moves Santana to second. Now with two outs. Steve, really an interesting case about Ed Whitson as we see this good bunt by Dwight Gooden. Whitson makes the play easily. But Ed Whitson, when he elected to go to New York, he signed that lucrative contract. And money, obviously, very, very important. But I wonder if his agent really took into consideration the culture shock of a young man from Johnson City, Tennessee, going to New York City. It's a big factor, and it's had an effect on a lot of guys' careers, yeah. not only in baseball, but in other sports. And other businesses, too. True. Mm -hmm. Very true. You have heard stories, I'm sure, of guys in the corporate world who were transferred to New York and mm -hmm. wound up wanting to move away or back to some other place. Or people from New York who are sent to other smaller cities, right. Midwestern cities, and get so used to the city, but at the want to move back and it's not a rap against the city obviously oh, it's just obviously that some not. people can't yeah. handle the pace and the the pressure that goes along with performing in whatever aspect in new york which is the city in the world yep yankee stadium and all the lore and tradition that go along with the yankees Grounded to first, Garvey up with it. And he's out of the inning. One hit and one left for the Mets here in the fourth. The Mets have now had at least one hit in 18 consecutive innings, and they lead five to nothing after three and a half tonight in San Diego. Now here's a word from Bush Beer. Say, Mets fans, nothing cools down a hot summer thirst faster than an ice cold Bush Beer. So be sure to have plenty of smooth-tasting bush beer on hand whenever you're enjoying a ball game. Good idea right now. Matter of fact, and the Mets are enjoying another ball game as they lead 5 to nothing over the Padres. Tony Gwynn, who leads the league in hitting, starting play tonight at 340, now hitting 339 after grounding to short his first time up, leads it off against the doctor as Dwight Gooden has allowed just one base hit through the first three. The breaking ball low, ball one. Dwight has struck out one and has not walked anyone as yet. Fastball right through there, one and one. Gwynn's only hit 455 over the last 13 games. One and two now. Scored 11 runs in those 13 games. He is some kind of offensive machine, and as you were detailing with Ralph earlier, Timmy, he has turned into arguably, if not the best, certainly one of the very best right fielders in the game. Two and two. ball is high. So a full count to Tony Gwynn leading off the fourth inning for San Diego. The Mets scored three in the very first inning, staking the doctor to a 3 nothing lead before he ever took the mound. They added two on Strawberry's towering home run in the third. Ground ball up the middle. Santana can't flag it down. And Tony Gwynn has yet another base hit. He leads the league now with 170 
21 hits on the year. Well, the American League scoreboard, Toronto Blue Jays, the winner in the first game of the doubleheader. If you remember that suspended game last night where all the averages counted, but that was it. It was 2-2 after 9. Well, Toronto wins the game tonight, 3-2 in 12 innings, and it's a 2-2 tie. They're locked on two in that ballpark in Cleveland. That game, the second game in the fifth inning. 3-1 Chicago over Kansas City, that's the final. John Crock, the batter. High ball one. And our Nissan scoreboard continues. 7-2 Minnesota over Min Milwaukee in the seventh inning. 1-1 one one, Boston and Texas in the fifth. And no score Baltimore at Seattle that game in the first. Blue Jays have now won eight of their last ten games. They're coming on in the National League East. They're six behind the Red Sox right now. Sole possession of second place. Outside as Gwynn goes, the throw is high, and Tony Gwynn has a stolen base. It's 23rd of the year. Well, Hernandez holding him on, and Tony obviously had a good jump. Padres five runs behind, and Tony Gwynn trying to ignite something. Like he jammed his right wrist when he slid. A lot of times you'll do that, because that hand automatically goes down. That's why a lot of hitters either hold gloves or dirt or something so they can get their hands up out of the out of the dirt. And if you ever see guys holding two batting gloves in their fists as they're running, that's about the only reason mm -hmm. one could think of for doing that. Let's hope that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> Three and oh now to John Cruck. And ball four is high. So the Padres have something going here in the fourth. The first walk issued by Gooden puts runners at first and second with nobody out. And the batter now, Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds fly to right to open the second inning, 0 for 1. He started the game hitting 303 with three home runs this year against Mets pitching. But he's batting just 200 career, actually now under 200 lifetime against Gooden. Ball one to McReynolds and the fifth in a row. McReynolds working on a mini streak of four games in which he's hit 316. One and one. Key pitch right there, the breaking ball, one and oh. Gooden had been high with his fastball, and as you pointed out before, Timmy, that's a good way for a catcher to help a pitcher bring those pitches down is call for that breaking ball. Call for the breaking ball and get it for a strike. That helps the fastball. There's another one, and it's one and two. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners at first and second. McReynolds in the last 10 games has driven in 15 runs. And he skies this one to center field. Dykstra coming hard. No chance for Gwynn to advance as it is in shallow center field. Truck retreating to first as well. So one out as the runners remain at first and second. That was an excellent sequence of pitches. John Gibbons calling for the fastball, missing, and then two curveballs, and then the high fastball. It's not the pitch, it's how you got there. For instance, if you throw four high fastballs on the fourth one, it's got to be a better fastball because the hitter's seen those four fastballs. The, the more in the sequence you throw the same pitch, the better that pitch has to be. That's one reason that the good hitters, the more pitches they see during an at-bat, the better their chances are of getting a base hit. Garvey grounded to second his first time up. Gwen going to third and gets there without a throw. As Garvey swings and misses. Stolen base number 24 for Tony Gwen. Well, I tell you, you got to admire Tony Gwen. He has done everything possible. The Padres have yet to score a run. Gwen's really kept him in the game. And now he's just trying to steal a run any way he can. He's thrown out two runners, has a base hit, and stolen two bases. 
Padres have now only 72 stolen bases, and Gwen has 24 of them himself. 0-1 to Garvey. Fastball grounded foul outside first. So the count 0-2. Garvey's been hitting the ball very well of late over the last 20 ball games. He's at 321 and driven in 17 runs. He is also against Dwight Gooden career, a 381 hitter. Fastball low and inside, one and two. Good pitch to throw Garvey because he has a tendency to go after balls out of the strike zone. Not only that, you got to tie up low ball hitters. See, low ball hitters have slower bats. You don't have to have as fast a bat. So therefore, you can pitch inside to Garvey. That's where they're going again. A little too far inside, two and two. Runners at first and third with one out. Win the runner at third after two stolen bases and John Cruck at first. Mets leading five to nothing. Breaking ball away gets him. Another good sequence of yes. pitches. Yes, sir. See, because that's what set up the the Fat, or the breaking ball right here with the two fastballs inside. Again, it's not the pitch, but how you got there. And that's why it's important to stay ahead. When you stay ahead, you can afford to throw balls inside to set up something away. When you fall behind, you got to throw a strike. And hitters know that. Greg Nettles, 0 for 1, grounded to Hernandez to end the second inning. Breaking ball in the dirt gets away from Gibbons, but not far enough for Tony Gwynn to advance. So it's ball one. This is a good play by John. Watch how he gets down. That's really good form right there. Showing the benefits of those hours in spring training spent with Vern Hoshite. Those are always fun, too, <laughs> those hours. Boy, those are vicious. Vern is so sadistic when it comes to that drill with catchers. Work those guys for hours on that, but it pays off. Fastball fouled back, and the count one and one. Greg has really done well against the Mets this season, even though his season average is about 210. He has hit 417 with two home runs against New York pitching. Good fastball, one and two. Settles looking fastball, got it, swings through it. He's made a lot of money on that high fastball throughout his career. Quinn at third and Cruck at first, two out. One and two the count punched foul and it's still one and two he's not picking the ball up at all he's striding before Gooden releases the ball see that left uh, or that right foot kind of buckle there and he just fought that ball off he did the same thing with that swing he took the time before he's ripe for a breaking ball but it's a high fastball out of the strike zone, two and two. With Dwight, I would imagine a lot of hitters feel like they've got to get a head start. Yeah, that's right. When they're looking fastball. Yep. But regardless of what pitcher's out there, and regardless, you speed up the hands. You don't speed up the body. That's what waiting is. Body, you take the same approach with the body all the time. The hands are just a little quicker. Dwight Gooden strikes out two in the inning, has three for the ball game, and the Padres leave runners at first and third. Still five to nothing New York after four here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. And we're back after this for Burger King.
Wally Backman to lead off the top of the fifth for New York. The Mets leading the Padres five to nothing. Backman one for two with a single to center and a run scored. Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry to follow. A rope to center. McReynolds coming on, however, and hauls in the line drive for out number one. Well, we talked earlier about John Crook of the Padres and Len Dykstra of the Mets and how they both have some antics at the home plate, <laughs> what you might call a plethora of mannerisms here. This is funny. Two of the more fidgety guys around. <laughs> Hernandez, first base. Crux's up six to two at this point. <laughs> what is he looking at? He's looking at everything but the pitcher. <laughs> fix the uniform, fix the cap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Ooh, watch out, Lenny. <laughs> Little comparison there. That's great. And Keith the antithesis of those two hitters <laughs> right here. Mr. Relax, Keith Hernandez, who's 0 for 1. He has scored two runs, however. He's walked and reached on an error on the shortstop, Templeton. And Keith takes a strike right down the middle, 1 and 1. The Mets have gotten at least one base hit in each of the last 18 innings. Strike two, one and two. Hernandez hitting an even 300. And he rips one inside the line. Gwen over there in a hurry as the ball stops. Hernandez trying for two. He's out. Keep arguing with second base umpire Jim Quick, but Tony Gwynn has his third assist of the game. Well, this is unbelievable. Line drive right inside the line. Watch Quinn get to the ball in such a hurry and throw in the same motion. What a remarkable performance by Tony Gwynn. Hernandez does not agree with Quick. It was a very close play. But just credit Tony Gwynn. The crowd here on their feet. And I don't blame them. He leads the National League in assists. He was tied with Glenn Wilson. And Gwen getting a standing O, tips his hat to the crowd. So it's a single. Hernandez thrown out nine to six. Gwen's third assist of the game. The Mets now have hit at least one base hit in 19 consecutive innings. And Daryl Strawberry, the batter, with two out. Ball one. Strawberry tonight, two for two, a single that drove in two runs in the first, and a two-run home run is 19th of the year in the third inning. Ball two. In the last eight games, Darrell has three homers. Make that four if it's fair, but it's foul. Oh. That ball went out the tunnel and headed to the parking lot. Oh, boy. He uncorked on that one. Woo! Darrell in the last eight games, three homers, 11 RBIs. Three and one now. Well, that throw by Tony Gwynn, his third assist of the game, sent me to the book, pal. <laughs> Most assists in a game, four held by eight major leaguers. Now listen to this. The last to do it, Elton Langford in Cleveland back on May 1st, 1928. The last to do it. So if Tony Gwynn gets one more assist, then he will have tied a record that has held up for 58 years. Man. Well, That's something. He's got a shot at it, yes, too. Yes, he does. I mean, we're only in the top of the fifth inning. Right. Eight. Danny Heath, the batter, and he hits one high in the air to center field. McReynolds going back. On the warning track, makes the catch, and the inning is over. A hit and a walk, and one left. And we'll watch some more of John Cruck and Len Dykstra fidget their way through at best. <laughs> as after four and a half, the Mets lead five to nothing. And we're back after this for Manufacturers Hanover. 
bottom of the fifth inning here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Well, <laughs> nail it. I guess they're Lynn Dykstra fans. Uh, check these out. The parents of these youngsters are here on vacation. They want the kids to send them money. That's a good idea. <laughs> Wish I could put some banners up like that. I like them. They even spelled my last name right. <laughs> About that. <laughs> Poughkeepsie, New York. Loves Bill Webb. Who doesn't? <laughs> anyway, bottom of the order for the Padres and back in to call it Tim McCarver. Terry Kennedy leads it off here in the bottom of the fifth. Five to nothing. What a performance by Tony Gwynn. A heartening sight to see the crowd here at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium on their feet and giving Tony a well-deserved applause. Three assists in this ball game. Two at second and one at home. Otherwise, this game would be over. Two and oh to Kennedy. Gooden has given up two hits. He struck out three and walked one. Makes that four strikeouts and he's walked one. Gwynn's assist at home obviously saved a run. Then he got a leadoff assist on Santana's ball. Two and one to Kennedy. So Raphael, instead of being at second with nobody out, was out of there, off the bases. And with one out, he got Hernandez last inning. And Hernandez out was followed by a walk to Strawberry. So another big inning of Verdi. Two and two to Kennedy. Andy Hawkins is up and should... Well, the pitcher will be the third hitter. Should there be a man on, I would imagine Steve Boris will be forced to go to the pinch hitter. Two out, nobody on, I don't know. Still two and two to Kennedy. I want to make a correction. Made a minor mistake, pal. I say it's minor because I'm the one who made the mistake. <laughs> it if is there were minor. you, it might be more major. Thank you. <laughs> I don't make any small ones. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Kennedy <laughs> out on strike. Strikeout number five for Gooden. I'll tell you about it after we look at Dwight fan his fifth. And we'll tell you that Thursday night on the Million Dollar Movie at 9, it's suspense on the desert sands with O.J. Simpson and Ann Francis, two of the better actors of our time, when they board a Vegas tour bus on Detour to Terror. All right. 1-0 to Gary Templeton, who grounded the second his first time up. I said 1928 was the last time an outfielder had four assists. That was in the American League. In the National League, Wally Berger of Boston had four assists in 1931. So three National Leaguers have had four assists in a game as an outfielder. And five American Leaguers. The but most recent, 1931. But it's still been 55 years. 55 years, man. And Tony Gwynn with a shot at it tonight. 3-0 to Templeton. 5 to nothing Mets. High strike. So it's 3-1 to Gary Templeton, formerly with the Cardinals, who came to the San Diego Padres for Ozzie Smith. 3-2. Say, fans, when you buy a Nissan 300ZX, you buy a legend. Experience one at your Nissan dealer. Three, two, one out. Nobody on. Bottom of the fifth. Ball hit well to left. Keep way back. Way back. Against the wall. Templeton's going to go to second base and stop there with the Padres down by five. Double number 14 for Gary on the year and the third hit for the Padres in this ball game. Templeton hits this ball a long way the other way and Danny Heap, who was not playing him deep and properly so, had no chance to go back and make the play. Dykstra hustling over there to prevent Templeton from going to third. Coming up with the ball in a hurry. Only the third hit for the Padres. And the pinch hitter for pitcher Eddie Lee Whitson will be Dane Orge. Orge hitting 244 with a homer and nine RBIs. He's 10 for 53 as a pinch hitter with five pinch hit RBIs. 
got the biggest hit of his life in game six of the World Series last year, driving in two runs for the Kansas City Royals to give them the 2-1 lead or the 2-1 victory over the Cardinals. And then they blew the Cardinals out 11 to nothing in game seven. 1 0 to Dane Orge. He had a great series in 1982 also. As a DH, fouls this one back. Yeah, he helped the Cardinals win it in 82, and then he helped the Kansas City Royals beat the Cardinals in last year's series. 1982, he was 9 for 17. Four doubles and one triple. 529 average. Curveball, he fouls it back. So it's 1 and 2 to Dane Orge, who started his career with the Phillies. Temple in his second base, one out, five to nothing, New York. Looked like he went too far, yes, says third base umpire Bob Engel. That was pretty flagrant there. Two out. Well, his high fastball from Goodman will do it to you. And it's a very tough pitch for most left-handed batters to handle anyway as Orch trying to lay off it, and he is a little upset. Master of the understatement. <laughs> is that any way for the father of five to act? <laughs> Dane, a member of the University of Texas Alumni Association, the Hook'em Horn. One and out of Flannery. <laughs> here in the fifth inning. <laughs> well, I like it. <laughs> Taffer, Gooden's going to have to hurry. Out at first base. A nice play by Dwight Gooden. And there's nothing you can do but wait until it comes down. And the oh, doc yeah. did and, and got him. It's five to nothing New York after five. And we'll be back after this word from Nissan. September 4th live from Fenway Park in Boston. The New York Mets take on the Boston Red Sox in an exhibition game that just might be a World Series preview. And you can catch it only right here on Channel 9, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And we also want to remind you as Andy Hawkins comes into pitch that this Friday night on the WOR telecast from Shea beginning at 7.30, a preview of the new Mets video, Let's Go Mets music video, the world premiere of Spain. Hawkins, 9 and 8 with a 4.34 ERA, making his 29th appearance and only his second appearance in relief. He's pitched 161 and two thirds innings, walked 55, struck out 90, and has been tagged for 20 home runs on the year. Well, it's unusual. You talk about what a difference a year makes. Leading off the bat. <laughs> People are discovering how to get their signs on. All they have to do is put Bill Webb's name on there. And That's right. Automatically shot. That's just the only way to go. That fellow, amazing. I wonder what's happening to the law enforcement in Brooklyn now. He's the district attorney out here, right? <laughs> the Bronx. <laughs> so the DA from Brooklyn is out here watching the game <laughs> in San Diego. One and zero to Ray Knight. <laughs> going to say about Andy Hawkins. He won his first 11 games or 11 decisions last year. He's a member of the Padres. And here he is in not mop-up duty, but in long relief. Swing and a miss, two and one to Ray Knight. Ed Whitson goes five innings, gives up five runs all earned on six. It struck out three and walked three. And of course leaves as the losing pitcher at the moment. When Andy was 11 and 0 last year, it was the best start in the National League since Elroy Faith went 17 and 0 in 1959. 
three and one tonight. Of course, Roger Clemens winning his first fifth, uh, fourth team this year. Popped up and could be playable. Kennedy off with the mask, and it's going to be out of play. Three and two to Ray Knight. Well, Steve Burrows, whom you see there, has been juggling things around in an effort to find something that works. That's how exciting the game is to that guy. <laughs> and he's not even reading the sports page. <laughs> he's intent on something. Imagine paying good money for a seat to read the paper. Lined, and there's Greg Nettles. One away here in the sixth. The Mets on top. Five to nothing. This guy had no idea how the out was made, or if an out was made. Number 35. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Catcher. This guy enthralled with this ball game. It's been a tough struggle for the Padres, but not at home. They're 36 and 31 at home. 14 games under. On the road, John Gibbons 0 for 2 on the night. Another pop-up. Out of play. 0 and 1 to John Gibbons. You and Ralph were talking earlier about how the Mets have an opportunity to have the best road record in the history of the game, or at least the modern history of the game. New York has 14 road games remaining, counting tonight. And they would have to win 11 of those 14 games to break that record of 55 wins on the road. That would give them 56 road victories. 72 red told the National League rec record with 53 wins. Right. So if they went eight and six, they'd tie that record, right? Correct. One and two to Gibbons. They have been remarkable. Every facet of their game. Gibbons goes too far. That strikeout number one for Andy Hawkins. And with two out, nobody on. The red-hot Rafael Santana is coming up. This ball riding up and in on Gibbons, three. and he tried to hold up, but Rocky couldn't. Alcantara. Here's the Nissan National League scoreboard. San Francisco over Montreal, 3-2. to two. Kelly Downs, his first big league win. Vaughn Hayes with an RBI in the ninth as Philadelphia beat L.A. 2-1. to one. Cincinnati over Pittsburgh, 9-5. to five. Slider misses to Santana. Or I beg your pardon, it's a strike. 0-1 oh to Rafi. sharply to Nettles and he throws out Santana three up three down here in the sixth inning it's five to nothing after five and a half and we'll be back Mets on top we'll be back after this word from the Bell Atlantic Yellow. well the last half inning went so quickly we didn't finish the Nissan National League scoreboard so we'll give it to you again San Francisco beat Montreal three to two Philadelphia beat the Dodgers two to one Cincinnati over Pittsburgh, 9-5. St. Louis got by Atlanta, 2-1. And Houston all over Chicago, 7-1. All finals in the National League. This is kind of like one of those type A behavior games where you're rushing around and everything. Everybody's hitting the first pitch. Well, the Mets do have a plane to catch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it built up a very quick five-run lead with three in the first, two in the third. And we're at not for this man who has played a marvelous ball game. One for two, a harmless single, however, two stolen bases. He takes the strike on the inside corner. However, he has three assists, one shy of the major league record in a nine-inning game. Curve ball, swing and a miss, 0-2. Two runners at second and one at home. Tony Gwynn. 0-2 oh to Tony. Gets a piece of a good curveball from Gooden. I got to tell you, Barry Lorish, who writes for the San Diego Union, wrote a marvelous article about Gooden this morning, and he had a great line about his fastball and curveball, and I'll share it with you right after this. it away. Barry Lors wrote that you see the fastball snap crackle with 95 mile per hour pop. The curveball, and this is a great line, the curveball drop in on right-handed batters as malevolent as 
malevolently as a bill collector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That was a great article. That's just a that's one of the highlights. He is a really outstanding writer. Yes, he is. Grounded up the middle base hit for Gwynn. Here the Padres have not scored a run. They're trailing five to nothing. And here's the star of the game, Tony Gwynn. It's really true. This is almost a carbon copy of his first base hit. It was also in the center field. Gwynn now two for three on the night. And he came into this game with a 158 career average against Dwight Gooden. So he's turning that around as well. Oh, Barry Lawrence said that the curveball dropped in on right-handed batters as, malevol as malevolently. It's easy for me to say as a bill collector. Now the lefty, John Crook. He has struck out and walked. This guy's got to play more. In his 27 starts prior to tonight, he's hit 347. He's hitting 317 overall right now. Drop the throw to first, and Tony Gwynn is out. So the first mistake Gwynn makes tonight is a big one. Well, this is not the first time Tony Gwynn has been picked off. This is one other facet of his game that he needs to work on. And Gooden just had him leaning, as you could tell. Obviously, once you pick up that right foot, you are dead as a base runner at first base. Line to right center, and that's how big that pickoff play was. Cook's going to have at least two. And he stops at second with his 15th double of the year. So that pickoff play at first base, a very big play. Well, this guy can just flat hit. That's all there is to it. He's only had 187 at bats now, and that's his 15th double. I mean, that ball was rocketed into the gap. That's generating some bat speed. So John, always with a smile on his face. He's taped up like a boxer. <laughs> like, yeah, he's ready to go in the ring. Whoop. A little... Want anybody sneaking around in a... Look at <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Brian Donlevy on dangerous assignment. You're expecting that knife to go right by the, the street lamp. You remember that show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right by your shoulder. <laughs> there it is again. He is really into it, isn't he? <laughs> Grounded to short by Kevin McReynolds, an easy play for Santana. Two out here in the sixth inning. The Mets on top, five to nothing. Number six, first baseman, Steve Garvey. And the batter, Steve Garvey, who's 0 for 2. He is grounded to second and struck out. often wondered how Garvey swings to loosen up playing golf. <laughs> Probably over his head. Yeah. <laughs> he swings like he's playing golf with a bat. <laughs> Fine drive, hit well to center. Dykstra back. He can't get to it. The ball caroming off the wrist of Lynn Dykstra. And Garvey's going to have a double. Double, it's now a five to one ball game. like Dykstra was trying to time that jump. Well, Lanny is not the tallest of players and tried to make up for it here by leaping to grab this ball, and it looked like he did miss time it a little bit. Garvey has always hit Dwight Gooden well throughout Dwight's young career, and it did go off the heel of his glove. Perfect. Lenny going up, Perfect. and you'll see it hit right off the heel. A little less of a jump. And he would have made the play. A fine effort by Dykstra. He also had to go a long way for the ball. So Garvey at second with two out. Five to one. And Greg Nettles the batter. Curve ball and a beauty. 0 and 1. Padres now with six hits. That's the total the Mets have. And remember, two of the Mets' base hits resulted in 
Gwynn throwing people out at second base. Another curve is high, one and one. So the Mets have done a lot of damage, really, on only four base hits mm -hmm. to get their five runs. stays alive. That kind of erases the first two stolen bases. True. The first two stolen bases failed to produce a run, and the pickoff, after what followed, cost the Padres a run. Gooden, after victory number 14, he has a four-run lead. We're in the sixth inning. Two and two to Greg Nettles. Here's the play again. Watch Gwynn's right foot. Whoops. All of his weight was on his right foot, and all he could do was try to shift his weight and dive back. Hernandez, as he does so well, got the tag down in a hurry right on Gwynn's hand as Gwynn attempted to reach back to the bag. You don't pick your right foot up whether you're coming back to first or going to second. Fastball just misses. Three and two to Nettles. That's why the crossover step is so important, not only in getting a jump to second, but in giving you the opportunity to get back to first base. You've got to keep that weight on your right leg. Steve, and once again, hi, everybody. Dwight Gooden, the leadoff for the Mets. Dwight, 0 for 1 in the game, also has sacrifice. And Andy Hawkins with a fastball that's drilled on the first base side, and this time the runner doesn't go as Tony Gwynn picks it up, and he loses his chance at that fourth assist. The Mets learn quickly. Well, Wally Berger, the last to do it in 1931, and Tony Gwynn was ready, I'll tell you, to fire to second base. My Dwight said, no thanks, I'll stop right here. Gooden picking up his sixth hit of the year, and it brings up Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra has walked and scored. He also is 0 for 2. And this one, a base hit to right field. Gooden eases into second base. Gwynn's throw comes in, and the Mets have runners at first and second. So Andy Hawkins, after working a 1-2-3 inning in the sixth Number inning, six. Wally now greeted by Second consecutive base. hits by Gooden and Dykstra, and it brings up Wally Backman. That hit by Len Dykstra, only his third base hit in his last 43 at bat. The longest hitless streak in the major leagues this year. Conseca of the Oakland A's went 0 for 40. Or he got a base hit that beat the Yankees of all game. Mets leading here 5 to 1 and Backman bunts it out to the third base side. Nettles comes up with it, throws to the second baseman Platinum recovery and on the sacrifice Gooden goes to third and Dykstra down to second. And the Padres made no attempt to put on a rotation play in an effort to get the lead runner at third base. They had Templeton, the shortstop, well over by First second, base. trying to hold good and close there. So runners at second and third. First base is open. 
Keith Hernandez coming up is one for two tonight with a walk and a run scored. Also reached on an air and scored. And singled in the fifth for his one base hit. Tried to stretch it into a double and was thrown out by Tony Gwynn. Keith hitting at 302 for the year. And San Diego playing their infield in for a play at the plate. That's leading five to one. And the Padres not wanting to give up any more runs. Fine hitting opportunity for Keith Hernandez with the infield in, and there's ball one. That's five runs on eight hits. The Padres have one run on six. Andy Hawkins won his first game in the major leagues against the Mets. And action in the bullpen. Rick Anderson pitching for the Mets. Randy Neiman, the left-hander, throwing for the Mets in the bullpen. One-one pitch, grounded foul, one and two. As usual, a large contingent of Mets fans here at the stadium in San Diego, wherever the Mets go for that matter, and as they started to chant, let's go Mets, Lance McCullers throwing for the Padres. They got a resounding chorus of boos from the majority of the folks here. One and two, the count to Hernandez. Keith has driven in 64 runs this year with a total of 11 home runs. And he fouls off a fastball. Count remains at one ball and two strikes. In games where the Mets are taking the lead through six innings, taking the lead into the seventh, they have a record of 68 wins and four losses. On deck batter Daryl Strawberry. What a night he's had tonight. Four RBIs and also picking up his 19th home run of the year and his 100th in his major league career. And again, the one-two pitch, and it's just inside two and two. And at two-two, the pitch to Keith is popped up in foul territory. Nettles back to give chase, and he makes the play. Holding the third base is Gooden. And behind him, Dykstra and Keith loses a big chance to pick up an RBI. Well, now two men away, and the batter will be Daryl Strawberry. And that was a good play by Nettles, as the ball was really not hit high enough in the air for Templeton to get over and make the play. First base open, and Strawberry is going to be walked intentionally, and you can't blame the Padres for this. Strawberry drove in the first two runs of the ball game with a base hit to right field. He then drove in two more to make it a 5-0 ball game with a two-run home run in the third. So he is being dealt with accordingly. On deck bat batter is Danny Heap, a left-hand batter. But Danny, not the threat that Strawberry is. Steve Boris, the manager of the Padres. Danny has struck out twice. That was against Ed Woodson. He also flied out to deep center. Now batting for the first time against Hawkins. You might have heard the fans booing when they decided to walk Strawberry. It's unusual to hear that on the road. But not only are there quite a few Mets fans here, but I guess a lot of Padre fans want to see Darrell hit, especially after that home run earlier. So bases loaded and heaps the batter and a call strike. And then he's had some tough pitches tonight. Called out twice and pitches he thought were out of the strike zone. And there's one that is out of the strike zone. It's one ball and one strike. 
Danny Heap is the kind of hitter, Ralph, that will probably see a lot of inside pitches because he likes to extend his arms. He's got that sweeping type of swing. And another one inside, so the count at two balls and one strike. Good in the runner at third base. Dykes through at second base. Strawberry at first. Mets leading five to one. Two men out, top of the seventh inning. And the fastball foul back, two and two. Crowd of 21,679 here tonight. in 1985, 18 and 10. And he gets another one right on the inside corner for the third time. Danny Heath called out on a pitch in that same location. That does it. No runs, two hits, a walk, and one left. I should say three left in the score at the end of six and a half innings. The Mets five and the Padres one. Now here's a word from American Dairy Association. Premiering September 8th at 7.30, the glitz, the glamour, and all the excitement of the hottest Hollywood news with Mary Hart and John Tesh on Entertainment Tonight. Something Entertainment is moving up to Channel 9. Well, we're going now to the bottom of the seventh. The Mets leading by a score of 5-1. to one. The Padres will be sending up Terry Kennedy. As their leadoff batter, Kennedy 0 for 2 against Gooden. The Mets have five runs and eight hits. They made no errors. The Padres one run on six hits, and they made two. Kennedy has grounded out and struck out. Gooden has struck out seven tonight. He has walked only one. Kennedy 1 for 23 against Mets pitching this year. And he takes the first pitch for ball one. Kennedy originally with the St. Louis Cardinals. And this one rounded out to the third base side. Ray Knight picks it up and Kennedy now one for 24 against the Mets this year. That'll bring up Gary Templeton, who doubled in the fifth. Templeton Gary one for two. Padres have had six base hits. And they have had three doubles. And Gooden's fastball, it calls strike. pinch hitter for the pitcher Andy Hawkins it's going to be Jerry Royster Royster with a home run in last night's ball game Royster hitting 257 five homers and 18 RBI he's six for 25 as a pinch hitter with five pinch hit RBI and it's Lance McCullers throwing in the bullpen for San Diego in last night's ball game the Padres used six pitches as the Mets wanted 11 to 6 with 21 base hits, the most they've had this year. And Gooden's fastball calls strike. One thing that Dwight Gooden is doing lately that he did not do the first part of the season is he's falling off a lot more to the first base side after delivering the pitch. And it's hit right back up the middle as he falls off to the first base side and the ball goes right where his body was. One of the great pitchers of all time was Bob Gibson, and of course Bob fell almost off to the foul side at first base. Seven hit off Gooden, it comes with two men out, and it brings up Tim Flannery, who is 0 for 3. Flannery, the second baseman for the Padres. 
He's had problems hitting the Mets pitching. And he takes inside for ball one. He is now three for 23 this year against the Mets, although he had three hits and four at bats last night, getting his first hit against the Mets this year. What Dwight Gooden is doing, and also what Bob Gibson did so well, is completing their follow through. And Gooden's so called problems, which were blown out of proportion to say the least, first part of the year, were probably due in part to some mechanical difference this year, which has apparently been corrected. And the fastball hit in the air to deep left field, back to the warning track. Goes Danny Heap and he makes the catch and that'll do it. So one hit and one left and the score at the end of seven. The Mets five and the Padres one. Now here's a word from Action Park. Hard throwing Lance McCullers in the ball game six and six with a 2.62 ERA. He has one save. He's worked 110 innings. He has made seven starts this year. He's walked. 42 and struck out 73 in his 110 innings of work. And his first batter will be Ray Knight. Ray 0 for 3 tonight after getting four hits in last night's ball game. And the first pitch ball one. Ray, however, has hit the ball hard all three times up. Last night, Ray got his fourth base hit against McCullers and McCullers with a fastball picked up a strike one ball one strike McCullers worked two innings last night gave up one run allowed three hits while striking out three did not walk a batter Padre pitchers in the ball game last night they were all participators in a team effort as the Mets won at 11 to 6 with 21 base hits. Spread that blame around. That's leading 5 to 1 here tonight, top of the eighth inning, and a rip hard ground ball to Nettles, who comes up with it. And Knight ripping the ball his last time up. He lined out to Nettles. This time it's a hard smash on the ground. And the time before that, he lined a deep right field to Tony Gwynn. So. Nothing to show for three ropes. That'll bring up John Gibbons. Gibbons has struck out twice and also hit into a double play, an outfield double play. Flight out to right field, and Tony Gwynn got his first assist of the night, throwing out Strawberry at home. Later on, he picked up two at second base. One ball, no strikes. John Gibbons, and there's one lined into right center field, and it'll be a base hit. Gwen quickly getting to it, and Gibbons holds it first. John Gibbons now has hit in all three of his starts behind the plate since being called up from Tidewater. Fought that ball off a little bit and got enough of it to hit it with authority into right center. And it brings up Rafael Santana. Rafael two for three tonight. And in the series, he's had six hits and 11 at bat. Batting at 2-11 now. Back on July 29th, he was hitting 176. And the first pitch ball one. Going back to Sunday's game in San Francisco when Santana picked up a hit. He's had seven base hits in his last 13 at bats now. And a strike and a count one ball and one strike. The colors in his 53rd game working to Rafael Santana. One man out top of the eighth inning. The Mets Leading five to one at the throw over the first base. Gibbons is not going anywhere. And the hit and run is on, and the ball is fouled off. So Santana reaching out off the fastball and fouling the ball into the stand. One ball, two strikes as Gibbons comes back to first. 
Mets have had a base hit in every inning of this ball game except the six. In last night's ball game, they had a base hit in every inning of the ball game. And that sixth inning broke the string of 18 innings in a row in which they've had at least one hit. And the one-two pitch is fouled back into the stands again. Scout remains at one ball and two strikes. Fisk and uh, McDowell throwing in the bullpen. Roger on the left side and Doug on the right. Toss to first base. Gibbons back. And this one hits into shallow right field. Going back is Flannery, and he makes the catch in foul territory. Gibbons back to first base, two men away. And we're going to have a pinch hitter for Dwight Gooden as Lee Mazzilli, who was on the end of Vern Hoshite's lineup joke before the ball game, will come on to do the pinch hitting. I like that line. What's five stand for? <laughs> Well, uh, Maz has never been over there on that side of the infield. He knew what, he knew what three was That's all right. about. He knew what seven, eight, and nine, but he didn't understand what five was. Only pay attention to the numbers you need to know. Maz hitting 226, three homers, 12 RBIs, six for 42 as a pinch hitter with four RBIs overall on the year. And the first pitch in the dirt. Good play by Kennedy to come up with it. Gibbons holds it first. For those of you just getting into baseball, the positions are numbered. Pitchers one, catchers two, first baseman three, second baseman four, shortstop six, third baseman five, outfield seven, eight, nine. And that way you know what position you're playing and also that's how you keep score. This ball hit deep to right and it is curving into foul territory. Tony Gwynn over there and Tony Coming up with the ball with a fine catch, and that is it for Lee Mazzilli. Tony Gwynn with a fine defensive game here tonight. Another fine effort by Gwynn, who had a long way to go. He had the bullpen and that corrugated wall to worry about. But he went in there and got the ball. What a game he has had, except for the pickoff at first base. He's been perfect tonight. In the inning, no runs, one hit, and one man left on base. The score at the end of seven and a half. Five, the Padres won. Now here's a word from Diet Right Cola. Yes, your body got it. Diet Right. It doesn't matter who you are. It's gonna be a tough fight. So do it yourself. Start free today. Diet Right Cola. Oh, yeah. Dwight Gooden, of course, wants to pass on a hello to his mother and father, Dan and Ella Gooden, who are watching the game down in Tampa, Florida, who are obviously huge oh, Mets fans. Gooden tonight goes seven innings, gives up one run earned on seven hits. He struck out seven as well and walked only one. He stands to win his 14th game of the year against four losses if Roger McDowell can do his job. Here's a look at the hits for each team by each half inning. The Mets with two in the first, and then a picket fence until the sixth inning when their string of 18 innings in a row with at least one hit has been broken. Then they picked up three in the last two innings. The Padres, single hit in the third, fourth, and fifth, three in the sixth when they scored a run, and one in the seventh inning. Mookie Wilson into the game in left field, replacing Danny Heath. And Tony Gwynn to lead it off against Roger McDowell. Gwynn two for three. Leading the league in hitting and in hits with 172 now. He's now up to 342 with his league leading batting average. Down low ball one. Corner, one ball, one strike. Back in 
1984, Tony led the league in hitting at 351. Working up toward that number right now. Led the major leagues in hits in 1984 with 213, and he has a great shot at 200 this year. He needs 28 hits, and after tonight, the Padres will have 34 games remaining. So it's a distinct possibility. Way outside. And the count now three and one. Mets lead at five to one. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Rip. And a base hit into right center. Wins third consecutive single. Well, this is his tenth hit in this series. He had four hits last night. Three here tonight. And he has had 10 hits in his last 13 at-bats against the Mets. All those hits and at-bats sending him this series. He's hitting well over 500 against New York pitching this year. So Gwyneth first with nobody out, and here is the fun to watch, John Crook, who has doubled and walked and struck out. One for two officially with a run scored. As we look at ball one, and then a third base coach, Jack Kroll. Two. John doubled and scored the only run of the game off to White Gooden back in the sixth inning. He scored on Garvey's double. And a strike two and one. He is perhaps even more animated than Len Dykstra, if that's possible. Well, Dykstra is a seasoned veteran now. He doesn't move around as much. <laughs> Calm down a little bit. <laughs> Only a little bit, though. Just outside, three and one. And it was a three-one pitch that Glenn hit for a single. To lead off the inning. field line and the count full of three and two. Well, Gwynn with two stolen bases in this game and they did not help the ball club any. He also was picked off in the sixth inning which hurt the ball club and now in that three two count. Trailing by four. He was running before will he be running now? He is not, and again, Crook fouls it off. When he was picked off in the sixth inning by Dwight Gooden, it was the third pickoff for Dwight this year. John, John smelling the barrel of the bat after that foul ball. He wants to see if that burning wood is detectable. Well, actually, he's burning cowhide because you can <laughs> burn the ball with a... I don't think he swung that hard, though. Very few people can make that ball spin. He was checking to see if he could go <laughs> He heard about it, wanted to find out about it. There's a base hit into left field down the line. Tony Gwynn, not running on the play, will stop at second as Mookie Wilson gets to the ball in a hurry. And the Padres down by four here in the eighth inning. Have something going again. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Well, let's take a look at John Crook. That's his bat. He's scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, it paid off. You treat those bats nice, they'll come through for you. They'll get you a base hit. Little Eskimo kiss there. <laughs> Crook two for three on the night, and here's Craig, or Kevin McReynolds who's 0 for three. McReynolds has slide to right, fly to center, and grounded to short. McDowell has fallen behind the first two hitters and they have each single. The Padres now with nine hits. The same number as the Mets. Ball two. McDowell hasn't had that good movement on his sinker so far tonight. Glenn took a 3-1 fastball and just tore it right up the right 
right field side for a base hit. Truck got a lucky base hit. He sort of flipped it by the third baseman. There's a fastball right in there. It's two balls, one strike. That pitch had good movement on it. Tony Gwynn at second and John Cruck at first. Nobody out here in the eighth inning. Fouled off. That sinker had good movement on it. And the count now two and two. Kevin McReynolds batting with first and second and nobody out. Roger McDowell has picked up a save in each of his last six appearances. As you look at Steve Garvey, the on-deck hitter. McDowell has saved six of the Mets' last eight victories. Way inside, and a full count to McReynolds. Well, the Padres are good hitting ball club. They're second to the Mets in the National League in hitting with a 259 team batting average. The Mets are at 264. And the Padres have had 114 home runs. So they are a good hitting ball club. They've also hit, not counting tonight, 276 on this homestand, during which they are 4-4 four and four going into the season. So the offense has been there. McReynolds fouls it off, and it's still 3-2. and two. Last night when the Mets got 21 base hits, the Padres had 14. And in the first game of the series, the Mets won it 5 to 2, and the Padres out hit the Mets 9 to 8. Kevin McReynolds with 16 RBIs in the last 11 games, including four game winners, as Jesse Orozco begins to throw for New York. He was the National League Player of the Week that just ended. It was a long drive to left center that Len Dykstra got a glove on but couldn't hold as he went into the wall. Just outside, ball one. McDowell with a look for Paul Rungy, the home plate umpire. As he wanted it. But it's one and all to Garvey. Gwen at third. John Truck at second. Kevin McReynolds at first. Nobody out. Two balls, one strike. McDowell in relief of Gooden. Greg Nettles. Waiting on deck. play if he can handle it, but the ball took a bad hop at the last minute. And as Bean scored an error, but it was a bad hop, and the ball hit hard. That puts the time run at first base. 
as the Padres have scored two, and that's all for McDowell. He leaves the ball game, and Jesse Orozco will be coming in. That ball had to be a base hit, but they have scored it an error. So Orozco coming in in relief of McDowell with runners at first and third. And while a pitching change is made, we'll be back after this time out with the Mets leading 5-3 over San Diego in the eighth. Jesse Orozco, the new pitcher for the Mets. Jesse with a record of 5-5. Five and five. 17 saves, an earned run average of 2.48. He has worked 51 and two-thirds innings, giving up 47 hits. He has given up five home runs. Walking 31 and striking out 48. And Orozco will be working to the schedule batter, Greg Nettle. Nettles, however, has disappeared back into the dugout, which would lead one to believe that a pinch hitter is in order. Nettles ordinarily not playing against most left-handed pitching. Garvey, the tying run now at first base with McReynolds at third. Two runs are in on what was charged in error, and Bruce Bochy, who has been a red-hot hitter, is going to pinch it for Greg Nettles. hitting 417 in his last nine games 10 for 24 with 10 RBI in those nine games overall Bochy as a pinch hitter has had six hits and 12 at bats batting 500 with two home runs and six runs batted in. And he is a former Met, but he's a former a lot of players, a lot of teams. He's an ex everything. Steve Burrows checking the lineup card. As Bochy stands in, representing the go-ahead run. Bruce with a total of seven home runs overall on the year. Hitting 282. Nobody out with runners at first and third. Ball one. at first base. Dwight Gooden has had four no decision in his no decisions in his last ten starts. And he does not want another one tonight. Right in there and a beautiful breaking ball from Orozco and it's one and two. couldn't get the bat back and Bochy does not argue on the call as it's made by the home plate umpire no appeal on the play Carmelo Martinez now will pinch hit for Terry Kennedy Kennedy a left-handed hitter who does not play hardly at all against left-handed pitching Martinez 5 for 23 as a pinch hitter he has had one home run as a pinch hitter and he has driven in two runs overall hitting the 237 for the year Carmelo very unhappy with his role as a pinch hitter as you look at Goose Gossage as Rich warms up for the Padres.
with low 2 and 0. Gary Templeton on deck. Runners at first and third with one out. Two runs are in here in the eighth at five to three, New York. Fastball popped up, foul back out of play. Coming right at us, look out, Ralphie. <laughs> Off the front of our booth, and obviously booted by someone in the first deck underneath us as they receive a round of boos. I thought you'd catch that. I, I was going to say, I've heard those boos before for balls I didn't catch. <laughs> Consequently, you made no attempt. <laughs> that would have been a tough play. Ground ball up the middle and a base hit by Santana. McDonald scores from third. Garvey going to third as the throw goes into second. And the Padres have made it a one-run ball game. New York now leading five to four. Well, this is a pitch that Martinez reaches out for and grounds it at what you would have thought was the shortstop position. But Santana playing in the hole, figuring that he would pull the ball. He is a home run hitter, had 21 last year. And he gets a base hit up the middle on a ball not hit too well. A run comes in and Garvey able to get over to third, so the tie run is at third with only one man out. And the batter will be Gary Templeton. And a pinch runner for Carmelo Martinez at first base. Tim Roberts carrying the go-ahead run for San Diego. The tying run in the person of Steve Garvey is at third base. Templeton one for three with a double back in the fifth inning. And a drive Templeton blooping one to right field to pick up the game tying RBI. Well, another little blooper off a pretty good pitch by Orozco. Strawberry playing fairly deep against Templeton has no chance to get to it. Garvey halfway comes in the score. It's a tie ball game and Gooden loses a chance to be a 14 game winner. Another ND for Dwight Gooden as McDowell and Orozco can't hold the Padres. Padres coming up with four runs here in the eighth inning and they have tied it at five. Marvell Wynn is going to be the pinch hitter. For Lance McCullers. Steve Burroughs has used just about everybody on the bench now. Win hitting 258, seven homers, 29 RBIs, one for six as a pinch hitter. And it's lefty against lefty. position player remaining on the Padres bench. Breaking ball for a strike and it's 0 and 2. Well, another good breaking ball by Roscoe. Wynn flinching on the pitch, had no chance to swing. And a Roscoe in front with a two strike count. Just outside, one and two. Well, Ed Woodson, the starting pitcher for the Padres, also off the hook in this game. With this Padre rally in the eighth inning. Four runs in the time at five. Strike three call. Second strikeout for Roscoe. Well, he got set up for the fastball on the two curveballs prior to that pitch. And Orozco with the tying run in 
the go-ahead run at second base now picks up his second out and the ninth man to bat in the inning stepping in Tim Flannery's 0 for 4 he's grounded out twice fly deep to left and struck out looking all those at bats against Gooden ground ball to second Backman will go to first to Hernandez and the inning is over but the Padres score four runs, all of which are turns to Roger McDowell on four hits and one error in the inning. And we are tied 5-5, going to the ninth inning after this word from Ford. Dip Roberts stays in the game to play second base for the Padres. Tim Flannery, who was at second, moves over to third base. Bruce Bochy remains in the game and catches now in place of Terry Kennedy. And Rich Gossage, the goose, is on in relief. And Lynn Dyke to the first battery faces, fouls it off for strike one. Gossage with a record of five and six. He has 21 saves. This is his 43rd ball game. He's worked 59 and two-thirds innings, given up 62 hits, seven of them home runs. And a pop-up on the left side. Gary Templeton in short left field. One away in the ninth inning. Dykstra now three hits in his last 44 at bat. One for four tonight. Number six, Wally Backman. And here's Wally Backman, who's one for three, plus a sacrifice. Wally singled the center and scored in the first inning. Five runs, nine hits, one error for the Mets. Again inside ball two. Five runs, 11 hits, and two errors for the Padres. One out and nobody on in the top of the ninth inning. corner and it's two and one both teams have had one run that was unearned on the errors that have been made in the game high chopper to short templeton fires and gets back in for out number two Well, Templeton with that good arm guns it over there, and it's no contest as Backlund is thrown out. So now two away in the ninth, and Keith Hernandez the batter. Hernandez is one for three. He walked and scored, reached on an error and scored, single to right and popped out to Nettles, the third baseman in foul territory. Keith has now hit in 21 of the last 23. And 13 of the last 14 as he takes a strike that he thought was inside, and it's 0 1. Fouled away, and it's 0 2. On deck batter, Daryl Strawberry, who has driven in four runs in this game. center field off the wall Quinn waits for it to come down as Hernandez will stop at second with a two out double here in the ninth inning representing the go ahead run for New York well there's no doubt about this one this extra base is all the way well hit up the alley in right center short hops against the fence and Right center field, Gwynn plays it off, and Hernandez in with a stand-up double. For Keith Hernandez, his 29th double of the year, and the Mets now have the go-ahead run at second base with Darryl Strawberry up. Hernandez now tied for fourth in the National League in doubles as Darryl takes a fastball right down the middle, strike one. Darryl has single to drive in two, hit a two-run home run his 19th of the year, and walked twice, and it's one and one. Fly ball to short left, Templeton and Flannery out. And 
Templeton makes the catch to end the inning. One hit and one left for New York in the ninth inning. And we will go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Still tied 5-5 after this for the Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. The Mets, as they led 5-0 after three innings, we are now going to the bottom of the ninth inning in a 5-5 tie. And Tony Gwynn, who is three for four, has made some outstanding defensive plays as well, will lead it off for San Diego. Gwynn now hitting 343 to lead the National League. And a fastball for strike one. Jesse Orozco, the third pitcher of the night, as Dwight Gooden left after seven with a 5-1 lead. Roger McDowell could not hold it as all four runs scored in the eighth were charged to McDowell. Gwen slaps it to left. Mookie first broke in, but now goes back, and there's one away. Well, the Mets finally get Gwen out. In this series, he has had 10 hits. And on the season, he has had 17 hits against the Mets. And John Kruk has had a pretty good night as well. Kruk is two for three. He has doubled and scored and singled and scored. He's also walked and struck out. Low and away ball one. He is, however, facing Orozco and a left-handed pitcher for the first time. Popped up, short center field, Backman out, two away. And that'll bring up Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds 0 for 3 plus a walk. He scored in the eighth inning when the Padres played it four to tie it. innings with two out in the bottom of the ninth and a 5-5 tie. Fouled away and it's 0-2. Ordinarily, it would be great to go into extra innings, spend a little more time in San Diego, see some more baseball. But they have a curfew at the airport here of 11 p.m. Pacific time, and if your plane, including the Mets charter, is not off the ground by then, you got a problem. A little trip to Ontario, California, about two hours away. There you can take off late at night. And it'll definitely be late at night by the time we get there. One ball, two strikes to McReynolds. A slow tapper to the mound. Orozco fires him out of there, and a 1-2-3 inning in the ninth sends us to the 10th. Overtime in San Diego on a beautiful summer evening. A 5-5 tie after the regulation nine. And we're back after this for Bud Light. It leads off the 10th in a 5-5 tie, and back in, Ralph Cotton. Okay, Steve Sabritsky, Mookie the batter, and batting for the first time, and a swing and for Mookie has struck out. Bruce Gossie's on the mound for the Padres. Came in the game in the ninth inning and now picks up his first out here in the tenth. Ball game tied at five. The Mets with ten base hits. The Padres with eleven, and that'll bring up bring up John Gibbon. I'm, I should say Ray Knight. And the first pitcher called strike. Knight's had a tough night. He's hit the ball hard his last three times up, but he's 0 for four. And Gossage comes in with a fastball. It's fouled off to the right side and out of play. The Mets in extra inning ball games with a record of nine wins and nine losses. The Padres in extra innings have won seven and lost four. And we're in the top of the tenth inning. Very nice with 
four base hits in last night's ball game. Payne for it tonight as he's been hitting the ball hard with no result. And they got one ball and two strikes. Lined out to right field in the third. Lined out to third base in the sixth inning and grounded out hard to third. That was in the eighth and Gossie strikes out his second batter here in the tenth inning. That'll bring up John Gibbons. John in this game, one for four, batting for the first time against the Goose. And the fastball for ball one. Gossies with a record of five and six. He has had 21 saves. This is his 43rd game. And again, the fastball, two balls, no strikes. We've seen in this half inning, why, for one reason at least, why Gossage is so tough. He's kind of wild at times. And there's a base hit to right field. Wynn plays it on the hop, and the Mets have a runner at first base with two men out here in the 10th inning. Ball game tied at five. And the batter coming up, Rafael Santana. Second hit off Gossage with two men out in the ninth inning. Keith Hernandez doubled, but was left at second base. Shortstop. Santana two for four tonight and in the series six for 12 at his first home run of the year last night and his third major league home run and the fastball a call strike that Rafi has finally gotten that average over the Mendoza mark he's hitting 210 now and the change up and a call strike for strike two That's at one point in this game, led by a score of 5-0. Then it was 5-1, and then four runs in the bottom of the eighth, and the Padres tied it at five. And that fastball fouled back out of play. For the uninitiated, the Mendoza line is a 200 batting average named for Mario Mendoza. And another foul ball. Who never seemed to be able to make it over that <laughs> Mendoza line. He was a a very good fielding shortstop, but the prototypical good field, no hit. And if you don't cross that Mendoza line, sooner or later, you will then be working somewhere else. Not in the big league. And that pitch way outside, one and two. Maybe right next to wherever Mario is at this moment. Mets trying to have the best road trip ever on the West Coast. They came in with a record of seven and one, their best seven and two. And a bouncing ball to the second baseman, Roberts, who goes for the fourth play to Templeton. And that will do it. And in the inning, no runs, no hit, one hit, and no one left. The score at the end of nine and a half, it's the Mets five and the Padres five. Now here's a word from R.C. Cola. Well, we have a change for the Mets, a change in the batting order switch. It is Howard Johnson playing third base. And the new pitcher for the Mets is Doug Sis. Johnson will bat in the ninth position in the batting order. And Sis will bat in the sixth batting order position. As the Mets make the double switch as we go to the bottom of the tenth inning. 5-5 ball game. And Doug making his 31st appearance. He has a record of two wins, two losses, and no saves. He has not allowed a home run this year. And he'll be working to Steve Garvey as his first batter. And as we go to the bottom of the 10th, back up from the field, making that arduous climb to the press box. Tim McCarthy. Climb to the top. It's always tough. <laughs> well, it looked like it was going to be an easy ball game till the bottom of the eighth. And then the Padres with four. Mets, of course, flying home tonight. And they have that problem. If they can't get out of San Diego, they'll have to go to Ontario to leave, and that's about a two-hour drive before they can take off from California. The worst situation I can recall with the Mets goes back a long way. Ground ball hit to third base. Howard Johnson tested right away, and Garvey is thrown out by Johnson. Mets played a 24-inning, 1-0 game in Houston on a getaway night, and they got away all right, and they arrived in New York about 11 o'clock the next morning after that 24 inning ball game that was one of the toughest jobs of all time for a traveling secretary so one pitch and one away and that brings up 
Bruce Bochy and Bruce as a pinch hitter struck out his first time up and he stayed in the ball game and there's strike one. Of course, the Mets did want to play one ball game last year in Atlanta that lasted to 3.55 in the morning. Swing and a breaking ball, strike two. But that was not a getaway night. The latest finish for a ball game in the major leagues ever, 3.55. Last night on the 4th and 5th of July. And again, the breaking ball, one ball, two strikes. Good in the starting pitcher left the ball game after seven innings, leading five to one. And the ground ball hit to Santana. He has a lot of time. Both he's very slow in the throw in time. And the question would be, why did Dwight Gooden leave the ball game in the seventh, leading five to one? And we don't know if Dwight had a problem. Injury or his arm sore or tired or whatever. Or how many pitches he threw or anything like that, but yeah, I, I think it's a, a, a moot point because of the way that McDowell has been pitching. I mean, if you if you leave it up to Roger McDowell, and that's no big deal, the only concern there is whether Gooden is all right, and it appears that he, that he would be. We certainly don't have any sign, but Roger McDowell, you put him in there fresh, and he is as good as there is. Except for here tonight where he got no one out. Here is... Biff Roberts batting for the first time. He came in the game as a pinch runner in the count now strike two. Roberts hitting 233 for the year. He has one home run and he has driven in 11 and a ground ball to the second base side fielded by Backman and the throw retires the side. So set a perfect inning. The score at the end of 10. It's the Mets five and the Padres five. Now here's a word from Bud Light. Well, the New York Mets bring it home this Friday night at 7.30 when they host the Los Angeles Dodgers live from Shea. Don't miss the world premiere of the New York Mets just relief, released movie video. And as we go to the top of the 11th inning in a 5-5 ball game, once again for the play-by-play, -play, Tim McCarver. All right, Ralph, thanks a lot. And Howard Johnson leads it off here in the top of the 11th inning. Howard's first at bat in the game. The Mets have three players left, Ed Hearn, Kevin Mitchell, and Tim Tuffle. And the Padres are out of players with the exception of pitchers, which means that Gossage, the second hitter in the bottom of the 11th, will have to hit for himself. Johnson betting 253 on the year, eight home runs, 0-1 to Howard. Padres used four players in the eighth inning to tie the ball game at five. Four players off the bench. Little looper to right center field. In is Tony Gwynn camping under it, and he makes the catch. One away, Lynn Dykstra, the leadoff batter, will be the hitter. Gossage entered the game in the ninth inning. He has given up two hits in his two and third work. Dykstra on the night, one for four. Also walked and scored a run in the first. It looked like a breeze for the Mets. They had a five to nothing lead in the first three innings, but the Padres snapped back with one in the sixth inning and four in the eighth. 0 and one to Dykstra. And Dykstra in a horrendous slump. He's had three hits in his last 44 at bats, and there's his fourth. So Dykstra at first base with one out in the batter, Wally Backman. A lot that they can do with Backman up there. Right here, Wally in that slump comes up with a base hit off that fastball. Just got it on the end of the bat, hit it up the middle. And Dykstra is on at first base with one out. The Mets have had a hit in each of the three innings now that Gossage has worked. As a matter of fact, in the last 24 innings, they have gone hitless one time. One, covering obviously three days as Dykstra dives back. Won 18 innings with at least one hit in every inning, and that was stopped in the sixth inning when they were retired in order by Andy Hawkins, a relief pitcher for the second time this year. Backman teasing third baseman Tim Flannery, not intending to bunt here with one out and Dykstra at first. 
Almost a balk. Gossage did not step to first base. It was kind of half and half. The Goose does not have a good move to first, so look for Dykstra to run. A fake break. Bochy out of there, so it's one and one. That's the intention of the fake break, to get the catcher to come out of the chute and the middle infielders to move around. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these games this year on WOR, tonight in particular. Met seven and one on this road trip. Pass ball is high, two and one. Ideal, ideal count to hit and run right here. There goes Dykstra, and Backman fouls it away, two and two. All these West Coast games do get back east a little bit late, but they've been exciting, and the Mets have been red hot. They have a record of 7-1 and one so far on this road trip. Mets trying to win their 46th game on the road this year. They are presently three short of the 69 record on the road, which is 48 wins. So with the count three and two, be assured that Dykstra will take off. Hernandez on deck. Well, you can't bet your American Express card because it's been used up on this road trip. <laughs> I'll say. Been, All the ink's off of it. <laughs> it's been overused. Line drive to left center. It's going to drop. Dykes to the third. Krupp feels the ball in a hurry, so the Mets have runners at the corners. And one away with Hernandez coming up. Well, little things that hurt you in a ball game that don't show up. It's a 3-2 count, so Dykstra automatically running on the pitch. If it were 2-2, two and two, and it was, he did not run. And he gets to third because he was in motion on the single by Wally Backman. So the Mets now have a runner at third with one out, and Keith Hernandez the batter. Hernandez two for four on the night. He has scored two runs. Entered the game batting 3-0-1. That's good for eighth in the National League in hitting. Chance to do some damage here. No one warming for the Padres. Ball one. Well, Keith doubled off Gossage back in the ninth inning. A double in the right center field. Dykstra at third base. Backman at first. enough to score the run. Mac Reynolds is back near the track, and he makes the catch, and Dykstra walks home, and the Mets lead it 6-5. to five. Keith Hernandez picks up a RBI here with his sacrifice fly, his 65th run batted in, and there's no question about Dykstra scoring. He can waltz in. Backman at first base, back to the bag at first. And the Mets now take the lead as Darrell Strawberry comes up. He fouls it back, 0-1. Fouls another one back, 0-2 to Strawberry, who has driven in four runs tonight. His 19th homer in the third and two RBIs with a single with the bases loaded in the first. Almost went, and he did go. And he did. That's the third strikeout for Gossage, but the Mets take the lead with a run on two hits, and they strand a runner. After ten and a half innings here at San Diego, it's six to five. Mets will be back after this word from Manufacturers Hanover. Duck Sisk on the mound, trying for his first win since June 16th. That was against the Expos. He retired the Padres in order in the top of the 10th, bottom of the 10th, three ground ball. And the Padres in trouble here. They have no one to pinch it for Goose Gossage unless they go to a pitcher. That's right. And they are going to a pitcher. It's going to be Craig Lefferts who's coming out to the on-deck circle. 
And to top that off, they have no one warming up. Lefferts was not warming up. Now they're getting somebody up down there. But if they score a quick run and then the it's going to be a left-hander. It looks like a left-hander getting up. 0-1 to Gary Templeton. Gene Walter, who was in last night's ball game, is now up and throwing as Craig Lefferts will be the pinch hitter. There were six of them in last night's ball game. Yeah. Padres are really depleted in their pitching department with the DL and also using all the pitchers in this series. It's been a tough series for them. They need the off day tomorrow, as the Mets do. Padres leave tomorrow for Montreal for a weekend series. The Mets will be facing the Dodgers come Friday. Line to left center, base hit Templeton. Going to go all the way to the wall, and Templeton's going to have a double. Well, it was Templeton that tied the ball game with a blue pitch. Back in the eighth inning, and now he comes through with a leadoff double to put the time run at second. And no one out here in the bottom half of the 11th inning. Gary Templeton with his third hit of the ball game, his second two-base hit. Craig Lefferts is going to be the pinch hitter for Goose Gossage. I believe this is his first pinch hitting appearance of the year. We'll check that out here. Leffert is one for six as a hitter this year. his first pinch hitting appearance. And he's bunting Hernandez all the way in front of Leopard as he waved through it. So it's 0-1 to Craig Leopard. Well, they're trying to tie it up. Using the sacrifice here, it's going to be awful tough to do. Pitcher batting here with Keith Hernandez charging. Bunting again, and he bunts through another one. 0-2 to Leopard. Nobody out. Templeton in second. We're in the bottom of the 11th inning. 6-5 to five New York. Tim Flannery, the on-deck batter. Leopard swinging, and he whacks one toward third. Santana is short, holding that runner close. Johnson near the line. Big gap on the left side of the infield. Leopard says he's going to pull many balls, that's for sure. Santana playing over by the bag and leaving that gap open at shortstop. Hernandez in at first. Johnson continuing to check Templeton at second base. Santana holding him close. Swing and a miss. A big strikeout for Doug Stiff. His first. Well, the Padres having to pinch hit with a pitcher for a pitcher. And the results right there as Leopards goes for one that was way out of the strike zone. So a big out for Sisk, and now he goes up to the top of the batting order, and Tim Flannery will be the next batter. Flannery 0 for 5 on the night. Mookie Wilson deep and left. Strawberry deep and right. Tim Flannery with fair power. He has three home runs on the year. Ball one. Templeton, only a mild threat to run, especially with the left-handed hitting Flannery up there. Rifles one foul. It's one and one to Tim.
This is the 39th one run ball game for the San Diego Padres. Dodgers lead the league in one run games. can you say about tonight's ball game? Dwight Gooden loses a chance to win his 14th, but the Mets win it, and Doug Sisk wins his first game since June 16th on that remarkable play to end the ball game. So once again, the final score in 10 innings, the New York Mets 6, the San Diego Padres 5. 